open numbers memorization nation i'm picking up my daughter hallelujah from daycare but first i wanted to spread some hope and numbers spit some of that fire right now i'm picking up hallelujah it's after the song i raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies i raise a hallelujah stronger than my unbelief i raise a dude my boy derek's in here let's go I believe Derek's birthday is 10-8. Mark 10-8 says, that's why men will leave their father and mother and be united with their wives. That's marriage. That's sex and marriage, brother. But you're a kid. Now you're one of my youth kids, so that's when you're married. You know what I'm saying, brother? Um, let's see here. But it says, when God is joined together, let no one separate. Is that my dude 4-4 birthday? I think it's my boy. Anyways, I'm trying to go live with my dude, Jeff. Let's go. What up? This is Gordon Hope and Numbers. We're just spinning some fire here today. Are you guys ready? I'm looking for my boy, Jeff, to jump on here. Were you going to come? Jeff, what did... Let me hit with you some fire until he gets on here. Can you guys see this? Four, six, don't worry about anything. He said, pray about everything. Present your request to God and be thankful. Six, five, Deuteronomy six, five says, you must lo love the Lord with your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. Talk about it with your kids when you get up, when you lie down, when you lock, walk around the road. Uh, it goes on to say, like, write it on your wrist as a reminder. Got it on my wrist. Put it on the door frame. Put it on your gates. Put his word on your gates. That's what that verse reminds me. It's Deuteronomy 6 5. Then there's an, ooh, 9 8. Haters gonna hate. Proverbs 9 8. Correct the wise, they'll hate you. Correct, correct the mocker, they hate you. Correct the wise, they'll love you. Haters gonna hate. Proverbs 9 verse 8. Put your birthday in the chat if you want a little fire here. Uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Who's in here? Is my boy Jeff here yet? We're telling people. Sonia F13, 13, 13, 13. Philippians 1, 3 says, every time I think of you, I thank God for you. Let's go. James 1, 3 says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance. That's verse 3. Verse 4 says, and perseverance must finish its work, so you can be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Catch that fire. So I was on there, uh, I was talking to my boy Jeff earlier today. And my boy Jeff, he's uh, he's on the Hope and Numbers team. Ooh, 4-4, four, four. that's your birthday, brother, I believe. There's a 4-4 four, four right there. Bam, catch that fire. Philippians 4-4 four, four says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Matthew 4-4 four, four says, we can't live on bread alone, but on every word of God. Boom, catch that devil that put out the devil's temptation when he was starving. Uh, 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he who's in me than he who is in the world. That's what time it is right now. And carrot, man, I believe that's your birthday. Catch that fire. Um, but I was talking to my boy Jeff and he had a huge de decision to make. Uh, he's talking to some people and his, the person he was talking to had some big decisions to make in their lives. And like, he feels like he's pulled in seven different directions, six different directions. Like what direction should you go? And then I go, let me tell you this parable from guess who? My boy Jesus from the Bible. And so the boy, my boy Jesus from the Bible, you know the woman that suffered with blood for 12 years? She bled for 12 years? Well, I heard this uh, parable, and I think of this analogy when I think of this. Uh, it says this woman went through the crowd and pulled on Jesus. Jesus, she went and just grabbed a little bit of his robe, and she was healed. She pulled on Jesus. And all the disciples and all the people that he was teaching were, were pushing on Jesus. And Jesus turned around and goes, hey, woman. Or is it, no, not even woman. Like, who touched me? I felt power go out of me. She, and she speaks up and says, it was me. She pulled on Jesus. And everyone around that wasn't getting healed was pushing on Jesus. So the analogy is this. When you're in the presence of God, when you are in the second Corinthians three seventeen says, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So when you're in the presence of God, when you're in the light of the, the in worship or in prayer or whatever, 
what is pulling you for you to do with your life? What job, what career, what path, what ministry, what aim do you have? When you're in that presence, that's what you should be doing with your life. Not what everyone's pushing you to do. Those people that were pushing on Jesus were not getting healed. The one that pulled on Jesus was healed. So where you're going to find healing in your mission and your ability and your gift and your whatever you're going to do with your life, get in the presence of God. And if you have multiple things you want to do, this career versus that career, this career, this ministry or that ministry, this school or that school, this person to date or that person to date, what is God pulling you towards? That's where you're going to find healing. If people or parents are pushing you, families pushing you, coaches are pushing you something you don't know, you know the Lord is not for, it ain't going to work. Acts 5, 38 and 39 says this. What should we do with the disciples? They keep proclaiming Jesus. What should we do with them? Here's what the, the master of the jail says. Here's what we should do. We should let them go because if it's of human origin, it will fail. But Acts 5.39 says, but if it's from God, you're not going to be able to stop God and you're going to find yourself going against his God, their God, Jesus Christ. Let's stinking go. It goes on to say they left and were told, don't speak about Jesus ever again or you're going to be back here and get whipped and go to jail and all this stuff. And it says in Acts 5.42, it says, they left rejoicing and praising that they could suffer for the Lord and they kept preaching the word. No one could stop them. That's kind of real faith, people. Why are we more like that? Even if they make us suffer, even if they put us in a prison, even if they kick us out of a friendship group or our cliques, those aren't real friends anyway. Why do we care so much about what people think? Because if God is for us, who could be against us? First, uh, Galatians 1.10 says, Am I trying to win the approval of people or of God? If I'm trying to win the approval of people, I'm not being a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you serving people or are you serving God? If you're serving God, you're going to win the right people in your life. You're going to have a better marriage, better relationships, real friends, a real community. That's going to change this world. Are you guys stinking ready? Are you guys kidding me? Because here's the truth. Think about your friends right now. I want you to think about your friends, your environment, you, the people all around you. I'm going to give you some hope and numbers right now. Look at the, look how hot it is in Arizona. It's 107 degrees. Proverbs 10, seven says this. We have happy memories of the godly, but those of the wicked will just rot away. Those people in your life that aren't doing anything that you're really impressed with because they got a cool famous million people on TikTok that are just worldly and doing wicked stuff. You are obsessed with them. Their name's going to rot away. It's not going to mean anything. But those who have, uh, it says the godly will be, uh, it says we have happy memories of the godly. You have happy memories of all the godly people in your life. You, when you, when you get all the fake relationships out of the way, you get all the bad company out of your life. Proverbs thirteen twenty says, if you walk with the wise, you grow wiser. If you companion fools, you will suffer harms. Don't be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. First Corinthians fifteen thirty three. You see how fast scripture comes to mind on any issue, on any topic. That's what hope and numbers could do for you. I'm just spitting this at the devil, wrecking the devil. So all this to say, I was talking about my Jeff. He encouraged me to get on here and tell you guys, if you don't know what to do with your life, get in the presence of God and see what the Holy Spirit is pulling you towards. And you do that. That's where the healing is. All right, I got to pick up my daughter. Hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of a storm. I raise a hallelujah. That's a great song. I named her after that. And I'm raising her a little hallelujah. So catch that fire. I wish she was here, but that's all I got for you. And I don't know what I just even said. I just winged the heck out of that, but hopefully it blesses you again. What's pulling you, not what's pushing you. That's what you should do. Get in the presence of God, see where he's pulling you towards. And that's your vision. That's your goal. That's your aim. That's your ministry to the day we die. We lift the name of Jesus. I catch that fire.